This is the Rankin File. Good morning, I'm David Rankin. It's a problem that we see, especially in the warmer months. Animals that are just out there without homes, without caring families to take care of them, and it takes the help of some people like my guest on the Rankin File this morning. They are out there rescuing those animals and taking them to places where they can have good homes, where they can be taken care of properly. My guest on the Rankin File today is Erica Warfield. She is... uh, Basically, someone that uh, is involved in a lot of different kinds of animal rescues. Er- morning, Erica. Good morning, David. Thank you so much for coming in. Tell me a little bit about how you got started. How did you start with the uh, whole idea of, get- of rescuing animals? <laughs> You know, it was something that I used to see a lot of, and my parents had always said that I had a heart for animals, um, but I had never really done any kind of rescuing until I started noticing in my neighborhood, there were a lot of feral cats. And as I was doing my morning walk, I started counting and I counted that morning just 20. And I thought, okay, if I'm seeing 20 within two blocks, how many are there really? Now, was that just a problem in the in the neighborhood? Is it was it- just a problem in my neighborhood. And I started uh, investigating and realized nobody was doing anything about it. So I contacted an organization at that time that was in existence called Kitty Co. And uh, really, Kitty Co. is now no longer in existence, but another organization I work with now called Safer has sort of taken its place, as well as the Dallas Cat Lady. And I basically just went on their website, got some help from them. I put together a flyer, said, hey, my name's Erica. I'm going to be doing this in the neighborhood. I'm going to be doing trap, neuter, and return. If you see some creepy lady lurking in your bushes, this is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I did that for about a year and a half. I got a lot of neighbors saying, yeah, they're over there. Go help yourself. Um, I only had one one or two neighbors that were willing to help. Really? That's why, it. Why do you think no one was interested in helping? You know, it's, it's always the same reasons. Um, I have a job. I have kids. Uh, I'm too busy. Um, but the fact of the matter is all the volunteers have those same things. It's just we choose to uh, step out of our comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Um, And at that time, I was working really crazy hours. And so you just kind of make things happen. And so I did that for a year and a half. And just in my little area alone, over that year and a half, I lost count after 160 cats. That's insane. It was insane. And, and it's not a, a whole big area. You Were you, were you on a, like a little territory of some kind? And That was just within my little neighborhood. Mm-hmm. I, I would say maybe I was working an area of three or four blocks. Um, And there was one segue into an area that wasn't my area, and that had 40 cats at an apartment complex. It was a lower income apartment complex, and it was, um, I needed protection, actually. I was getting death threats. Really? Why? Oh, yeah. Um, There were a lot of um, registered sex offenders that were living in this this apartment complex. Um, There were other former criminals that had been living in that apartment complex, and they just... They wanted their status quo left alone. They didn't care. and um, They didn't want some stranger snooping around. No, no. And so the, the, the story they came up with, so they could do harm to me if they wanted, was that I was an undercover police officer, and my story was that I was spaying and neutering cats, but really checking them out. <laughs> okay, even if, that, even if that were true. <laughs> Which it never could be true. Right. So we wrapped that one up pretty quickly. But mm-hmm. the point being, you know, there are areas of the city that often get overlooked, and um, this being one of them, nobody cares about the stray and feral, you know, cat or dog community. And there's a lot of great rescue organizations out there, and we're just so happy to be a part of it. I mean, you look at Duck Team 6 and what they do in Oak Cliff, Paws in the City, um, Cat Matchers. I, I could go on and on and on. I've just chosen to align myself um, with Dallas Cat Lady and Safer. Which Why is- don't more people know about this? I think you have to seek the information out. I think you have to care. I think you have to want to care. Um, and I, it always surprises me because in the age of Google, you would think people would Google this stuff. Even mm-hmm. the ones that have said, oh, yeah, I've been meaning to do something about it, but I didn't know where to start. Please, really, we all have computers. We all have iPhones or a smartphone, and, and you didn't think to look there? Mm-hmm. I mean, that just doesn't make sense to me. I think I think a, a, lot, a lot of times we either choose to have a blind eye or... We say that we're too busy and turn a blind or eye. Or there are a lot of people that are, you know, some people say irresponsible enough to let their cats go outside for until uh, hours, all hours of night. How can you tell the difference between someone's 
family pet that is let outside to roam the neighborhood as opposed to a feral that doesn't have a home? Um, well, typically, um, if, if somebody's allowing their pet cat out, it's, you kind of hope that they're not doing that. You um, hope, yeah. you, you really hope because an, a, a friendly cat, that's an outdoor cat is a dead cat period. End of story. If they're friendly and they're outside, it's going to happen. Um, but you can typically tell by behavior. I mean, because pet cats are going to be friendly, they are going to come to you. They, they hopefully have a collar um, and tags. If they don't, they're just they're just human uh, human friendly. Mm-hmm. Whereas the feral cats will run away from you. They don't want to have anything to do with you. Um, they're probably scraggly or dirtier looking. Now the difference probably skinnier because they're not necessarily eating fairly consistently. Exactly, and if they are eating, it's not stuff that they really should be eating. Mm-hmm. And and the whole the whole concept of the difference between feral cat when you when you're out there trapping cats that are out in the open do you ever get family pets? Ah, uh, you know, no, very rarely. I I can't recall a time I ever trapped somebody's pet cat. Um, now there is a process, you know, when you do trap new to return. Your your hope is as you're doing this. You trap them, you get, take them to go get spayed or neutered, they get their shots, um, and they also get their left ear tipped, which is the international and national symbol for um, this cat is fixed, please don't euthanize it later on down the road. Mm-hmm. He's part of a managed colony. What do you mean tipped? Well, tipped, tipping means uh, while they are under having their surgery, the vet will remove about a quarter inch to three-eighths of an inch of the tip of the left ear, and they'll flatten that ear out so anybody looking at the cat if they look at the left ear you can see that this cat has clearly been spayed or neutered Mm -hmm. now i've i've re-trapped cats that had that tip and oh here you can go you're Mm -hmm. you're you're clearly not who i'm looking for today um is the problem is the main problem that you're looking for is those cats that are not spayed and neuters and and they're been making more Cats that are going to be feral? Oh, that that is the whole point of trap, neuter, return. It is recognized by the American Veterinary um, Association. I'm sure they have another name that they call themselves. Mm-hmm. But but the Vets Association, they recognize it. UT Austin recognizes it. City of Dallas recognizes it. Um, A&M. Um, pretty much many of the uh, Texas organizations now recognize that as the way to manage a colony. Um, oftentimes you'll hear people try to relocate, and that does nothing. If you empty out uh, an area where a colony is living, then what's going to happen is you get more squatters come in. Mm-hmm. And it costs more to trap and kill or trap and remove the city and the taxpayer which is hugely important to me, you know, because I'm not a trapper as a living. I'm a realtor, Mm -hmm. you know, so I'm looking at property values. I'm looking at um, what taxpayers have to pay out. And it costs the city of Dallas, Dallas Animal Services, anywhere from 50 to 180 dollars per cat, Mm -hmm. you know, to do it that way. How many cats are we talking about? Well, one hundreds, thousands. Oh, yeah. Well, one single female cat over the course of seven years, her and her offspring, I have read can produce over 400,000 cats. Now, I don't know if that's true. I do know that a single female cat can produce three to four litters a year. Mm-hmm. And if you figure a and litter- it goes can exponential. Be, yes. And, and then you've got the whole Fibonacci series working. Mm-hmm. Um, and if a litter has two to 10 kittens in it, you know, because they have 10 nipples, they can have 10 kittens. Mm-hmm. It's totally doable. I mean, yeah, you're going to have the Fibonacci series all over the place. So, uh, you know, 400,000 doesn't sound that out of- the question when mm-hmm. you look at it that so way. So the issue of feral cats, when does a cat become feral? Well, um, is it because I've heard it's because a cat can become feral because within the first six weeks of its life, it's never had human contact. That's true. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Um, basically, you, you have cats that are either um, domestic cats that are either lost, dumped, abandoned, and within a matter of weeks, they will revert to feral. They'll revert to wild Mm -hmm. now the offspring that are born to those cats if somebody didn't have them fixed before they did all of that because really they're they're victims of us um the offspring will be feral if they are not rescued within their first eight weeks of life Mm -hmm. um now i've also heard that there's such a thing as a feral gene um where i've seen that happen where i've rescued a kitten um at seven weeks and there was no taming it it, it was clearly it was too late, and that's odd because usually if you can do it bef- within that eight week time frame, you're mm-hmm. golden. Um, but 
What's the process like to tame a feral cat? It's it's pretty lengthy. I would never try it with an adult because um, once they're they're that age, they might become what's a friendly feral. They might be friendly to you because you were the feeder, mm-hmm. and you might eventually be able to take them inside. But you would never be able to adopt mm-hmm. that cat out to anybody else. Um, but if you're you're working with kittens, sometimes you have to separate them just because they'll tag team you like it's WWE. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and so sometimes you just have to separate them in different sort of kennels and enclosures and then work with them that way. Sometimes they 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 tend to both gravitate to, towards you. So it's really not a one size fits all, you know. Are we ever going to get to a place where this is not an issue? Uh, I I think not if more people don't start getting involved. Um, The way I look at it is if you're a homeowner and you're feeding uh, a feral cat community, in essence, you are the manager of that colony. Um, And it would behoove you to make sure your colony doesn't grow from 8 to 28 within one litter cycle. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, so um, it's, it's really a question of having homeowners understand there are resources out there. Um, and to avail themselves of it. Um, I mean, there's there's different kinds of traps. I personally went and, and got traps. You can rent traps. Um, there's some really great traps from Animal Care Equipment and Services. True Catch traps um, use a ring, a drop ring system that doesn't make any noise. Um, Have a Heart has the springs. All of those you can get in feed stores or at a uh, 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 home, like Home Depot. Mm-hmm, like a Lowe's. Lowe's. They would have that too. More with Erica Warfield. We're talking about rescuing cats, feral cats, how you can help. I'm David Rankin. This is The Rankin File. I'll be right back. This is The Rankin File. I'm David Rankin. My guest, Erica Warfield, she's out there helping to rescue and trap feral cats to cut back on the issue in our communities here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Erica, I want to find out about the group that you you work with. Tell me about uh, Safer. What is it called again? It's called Safer Stray and Feral Rescue. They started out um, as an offshoot of the Dallas Cat Lady. And now, what's the Dallas Cat Lady? Okay, Dallas Cat Lady is Lee Sessler. She is amazing. Um, if you've ever heard of the Dog Whisperer in mm-hmm. Cesar Milan, mm-hmm. she's the Cat Whisperer. I've seen her pick up cats that I wouldn't even dream of poking with a 10-foot pole. She's just wonderful. Dallas Cat Lady started back in 2006. She's a 501c3, as is Safer. And over these last eight years, she has placed over 5,000 cats, kittens, and dogs through adoption. Um, last year in December, she placed 110 cats for that month alone. That includes kittens. Um, now, when, in, you're talk, when you're talking about placing adoptions, mm-hmm. you know, the ones Giving that them you good homes. exactly the ones that you trap that are tameable or are already tamed and you know that they can be adopted. And typically it's kittens, but sometimes you get a really sweet older cat that mm-hmm. got kicked out. Um, and was never fixed because somebody didn't have the money to get them fixed, which is unheard of because Mm -hmm. there's so many low-cost spay and neuter. Um, But in conjunction, when there was a Kitty Co. and uh, KCAP um, and even now Safer, Dallas Cat Lady has assisted in the spay and neuter of 6,000 cats. Yeah, over the last eight years. Um, And that's huge. And so we were talking earlier about ear tipping. Um, Why would you do that? Well, ear tipping saves lives. It sounds... It sounds barbaric, but it it really does save lives. Um, One, if you're trapping and you trap one, you're like, oh, I can let you go. But there are some mean people who try to get rid of cats and they'll trap them and take them immediately to Dallas Animal Services. But Dallas Animal Services recognizes the tip. Mm -hmm. And so they will say, oh, okay, well, this is where this cat was caught. Let me call Lee. Hey, we've got a tipped one. Can you take it back to this address? Mm -hmm. And they will not euthanize when they see an ear tip. So you're protecting the cat you're feeding if you do the spay neuter and you get the ear tip Mm -hmm. through Safer uh, and the Dallas Cat Lady. Um, Last year, I want to say she was able to save 400 cats out of Dallas Animal Services. Through herself and through uh, the people that work with her? Exactly, because of the ear tip. Mm -hmm. Irving Animal Services, they were able to rescue 100 Mm -hmm. because of that ear tip. So, um, you know, ear tipping is not the barbaric thing that it, it seems to be. If anything... 
um, when you do trap, neuter, return in this way, that is the prescribed way of um, managing the colonies. And if you don't do it that way, then you might as well be like the Sochi Olympic organizers just putting, you know, poisoned meat out for the dogs Mm -hmm. to get rid of them. It was ridiculous. That was the whole public outcry. There's got to be a better way. And there is a way and it's right here in Dallas. You mentioned something about trap, neuter, return. And I was kind of curious about this because it sounds like you're two different, two different object, uh, uh, Objectives? objectives you're trying to get into. One is to try to find them good homes. And then the second one is... You trap, you get them neutered, and then you say return them. Where are you returning them to? You are returning them, the ones that are feral, truly feral. And you'll know because you can't even get them out of the trap Mm -hmm. (laughs) for the surgery unless you're wearing a falconer's glove. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) You kind of have to get the um, anesthesia in Mm -hmm. them while they're in the trap. Yeah. Um, Your goal is the ones that are are friendly enough or can be tamed, you try to get them adopted out. The ones that um, are too feral, you take them back to where you trap them. And after they've had a night with you to sleep it off, and then you re-release them back into their captivity Mm -hmm. um, or back into their environment. Excuse Mm -hmm. me. Back into their colony? even. Back into their colony. And they become part of a managed colony. And now here's why that works is because once your colony is neutered or spayed, they keep away other unsterilized, unspayed, unneutered toms and female cats, what we call queens. Mm -hmm. Um, And so once you've managed your colony in that way, you're not going to get newbies coming in. And they're going to keep your rodent population down. They'll eat the bugs. They'll eat the snakes. They'll keep out intruders. There's no more roaming. There's no more spraying. There's no more fighting. There's no more breeding. There's no more spreading of diseases. And that's why TNR is so important. When I was growing up, my parents had cats and we we would have they would have kittens all the time. They're mostly indoor cats, but then they would, would go outdoors again. It's a small town. But um, the one thing about my parents, whenever we had kittens, the kittens were all adopted out. And in a lot of cases, those cats would go to farms and would, would become what we call barn cats. Mm-hmm. They're domesticated because they've been around humans forever, but they lived in barns. And again, like you said, kept the rodent population mm-hmm. down. Does that still exist? Well, you know, there is an organization called Barn Cats. And so for, I know with Lee and the Dallas Cat Lady and adoptions, when you do end up with one, there is no taming. We will try to contact Barn Cats mm-hmm. and and they look for people with properties where that can happen. Um, and it works, doesn't it, to keep, to keep the rodent population down? Oh, it totally does. It totally does. The area where I started, um, this is how Trap Tuna Return works. The colony has maintained its size. Now, over the years, they will start to pass because of natural causes or cars or, mm-hmm. or whatever, but they maintain their colony. And over time, as they all begin to transition, you know, heavenward, um, that's how the colony diminishes. Mm-hmm. And then no newbies come in. Mm-hmm. It's very strange how that works, but it's when you trap and then relocate, you're just starting the cycle all over again. You're going to get a bunch of squatters. You know, because even even people do that. Yeah. You see a vacant building, it's going to end up with squatters. The cats do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so Safer was started last year um, after Kitty Co. sort of went out of business. And they're focusing on the trap new to return. Um, they are currently trying to raise awareness for funds to the tune of $200,000 so they can open up their own standalone facility. Right now, um, they're in conjunction with Noah's Ark. Uh, pet hospital up in the Addison area, mm-hmm. um, and they'd really like to have their own facility. And so that's if they had their own facility, what would they do with it? They would be going to town on the spaying and the neutering and giving the rabies shots. That's the important part. Is that particular that, section that having a facility and a clinic where they can do all of this kind of stuff? And that's that's really because um, I'm no longer trapping. Although I'm talking a lot of trapping, mm-hmm. I used to be the boots on the ground. I've sort of moved more towards financial donation. Mm -hmm. And um, this is so important to me. And I I really think this is what makes makes a Dallas realtor a Dallas realtor. Um, As I said, I I am I'm in real estate. Um, So I I just really feel like I'm not quite sure how to say that. It's a calling. It it kind of is a calling. It kind of is. And so on my website, I've sort of thrown that out there. Anybody that would like to have a free consultation with me um, regarding listing their home or maybe they need somebody to represent them as a buyer, anybody, um, you know, I think you'll be thrilled with what I have to tell you in terms of real estate. Mm-hmm. And I'm willing to make a $100 donation to Safer. 
for everybody they, that I meet, whether you mm-hmm. use me or not, right. that donation is going to Safer mm-hmm. um, because they need two hundred thousand dollars. So. So and again, as you mentioned, you, the, the the trap, the neuter, the release. Mm-hmm. Part of the neuter process is making sure their shots are up to date too. How important is that as as the aspect of that? Oh, it's huge. It's huge. A lot of people complain, you know, that's why they want to just kill them off. Mm -hmm. Um, But they're getting their shots. They're getting a full round of the FERCP and the rabies and then the ear tip and then the spay or the neuter. And they also get flea control. Now, that flea control is only going to last for a month. Mm -hmm. But, you know, studies have shown in terms of vaccinations that uh, you're pretty much, even if they only get that one round because they're feral and then they get returned back, that should cover them up to 70%. Mm -hmm. Just that one round. So it's hugely important. You know, it's funny because you always hear people, well, they're, you know, they're peeing, they're doing things in my garden and, you know, they get really upset about that. Um, But I don't really ever hear anybody saying, well, let's go round up all the birds because they're, you know, relieving themselves on my car Mm -hmm. and relieving themselves on my garden. It's like a totally different matter when it comes to One other issue, of course, that comes up with cats and you and I both know that that I'm, I've always been a cat guy too, is the ones that are left behind by their, by their caretakers, but they've declawed them and then they've let them go. Uh. And then the, the cat has, the cat has no, <laughs> literally no defense. Right. Right. And do, do you run into that? We have. On occasion? We do. We have actually. Um, in fact, my parents were really kind and offered to foster um, a cat that had been brought into Dallas Animal Services. Um, she wasn't trapped, but she was dumped there with no note, nothing, just dumped. Um, so there was some shame involved. They left her in the drop box mm-hmm. um, and she was declawed and mm-hmm. they would have put her down. And, you know, we got, Lee got the call. She went and got her. My parents fostered and they ended up It was a foster fail. They Mm -hmm. ended up adopting her. (laughs) But the reason they were attracted to her was because she was declawed. And so, um, like I said, whether whether it's, you know, cats being declawed or just a a house cat that gets dumped and they end up being a feral. I mean, it's all because of us, you know, as humans and how we treat them. Can a house cat that is domesticated and then becomes feral, can that, that house cat be rescued and put back into a home? And be re-domesticated? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, it just depends on how long they've they've been out there. I, I have, you know, I, I call him a friendly feral. I have one um, who we think is about 10 years old. And so he was out there for, I don't even know if he was ever owned. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's super fly at my place. I yeah. mean, he's living large. He's, he's thinking this is retirement. Um, for him so and he's just super sweet with me but there, i i could never adopt him to anybody else so. are there dogs that are in the same situation oh yeah oh my gosh yeah so many people you know and that's what you were saying you know that your family would adopt mm-hmm. out the kittens and i and and for anybody listening i i think that's wonderful if you're going to personally adopt out um animals make sure that you make some kind of fee involved you know because if you give something away people will treat it like a leaf in the wind Mm -hmm. if they got it for free and so you see a lot of that going on in dallas people giving each other you know puppies and kittens and then the minute you know one of them sprays because they haven't been fixed they're out Mm -hmm. you're you're gone um and it's because somebody there's no investment in it exactly exactly so um i would suggest if somebody doesn't want to adopt or foster or do any of that kind of stuff at least oh my gosh say you know what five dollar donation to dallas cat lady Mm-hmm. Injures. I mean, but uh, we always recommend, you know, coming to Lee. She's got one of the highest placements rates in the city. Thing is, though, there's a shortage of fosters. So as long as you're willing to foster and, and bow up and take responsibility for that part, you are so welcome to come how to adoption fosters, events. How many fosters fail, like you said, and ended up foster adopting? Foster fail? Yeah. I have no idea what the number is. I just know my parents have the best foster fail story <laughs> ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is real good. You, you had mentioned before that um, you, set up, you set up a website and you're actually putting your money where your business is. Uh, how does that work again? And, and then give me the website. Um, the, well, the, well, the website that I have just started uh, for my real estate business is called liveindallastx.com, liveindallastx.com. And if you go to the videos that I have up there, the first video on what's in it for you, I have a call to action that, you know, these are the four things I can offer you. But more importantly, you're going to get a guarantee. And the guarantee is this. I am willing to start donating 
too safer to help them get their facility because they need two hundred thousand dollars. And if you hate what I have to say, they're still going to get the money. Mm -hmm. But if you meet with me, we'll pull together and we will get this done and we'll start helping um, other other places in Dallas where the people don't have the funds to manage the colonies to start saving lives. Okay, once again, I want you to give a couple of websites, if you would. Uh, yours, and then if you have handy the safer and the uh, uh, cat ladies, if you happen to have them. Well, mine is liveindallastx.com. Mm -hmm. And then Dallas Cat Lady, I believe, is just dallascatlady.com. Or, you can also Google that. Yeah, definitely Google Dallas Cat Lady. She will show mm -hmm. up. Uh, you can also Google Safer, and they should have something. Again, Safer. Well. S as in Sam, mm -hmm. A, F as in Foxtrot, E, R, Safer. Safer. Oh, Stray or... and Feral. Stray and Feral Rescue. Safer, Stray and Feral Rescue. Great. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. That's Erica Warfield, Cat Rescuer. I'm David Rankin. This is the Rankin File.